I want to tell you a story because it might help. It might reach you in a way that if I'm not actually present, I'm not going to be able to do this. So I think the story, it'll be the most touching. I could tell you the ideas and the fundamentals of what I'm saying, the lessons I learned. And it just, it wouldn't, I, I can't do it in any, in any other way. So I wasn't, let's see this. I wasn't weird. I wasn't like, oh my God, this kid is like scratching his, scratching his class or something. This kid's like wanking and stuff. No, 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 I think I was just an easy target because I was skinny. I was different. I was small, just physically. Not a lot of meat on my butt. I'm pretty slim. Play too many sports, and then okay. So I played sports. I just danced around. No, I didn't do dance, but I didn't stick one. I would do soccer for a season, then try basketball, try baseball, and I just kind of around. But I didn't feel very motivated to do any of it. And I'm just I'm gonna hop right into the stories. I'm in sixth grade. The bell has just rang. I've gone to my locker to get my stuff, get my backpack, and my computer, and well, whatever. Sixth grade, so we're like super, super, super kids. Not super compared to where I am now. Like, how old? I was walking to the bus stop, and I was just not thinking about anything. Just going to the bus stop, just walking there. And all of a sudden, I'm I'm just on the ground. I'm my palms are slammed in the ground. My elbows have been like scraped. My hands are all it's just uncomfortable feeling all over my arms and my knees probably too. And I'm on the floor, and I'm I'm wondering what just happened, and then. I hear laughing behind me. Also, I have like this heavy back. You see these little kids walking home from school and like they just got off the bus. Big old backpacks. Like, I'm going to show you how big it is. You know, the backpacks. Anyways, big old backpacks. Like these kids, if, they like, if they're not perfectly balanced, they're just going to fall back. And just flop over two two times the size of this. My backpack has landed on top of me as well. So, just I'm, I'm confused and I'm in pain, embarrassed that this just happened in the middle of the hallway. It wasn't super crowded, it was in the hallway, They're laughing behind me. And I look and it's one kid from my science class, and it's another kid who is friends with this kid, and they're like, just laugh. It's the funniest thing they've ever seen. And basically, what, what had happened, he just, the kid from my science class, he just, I don't know if he ran or just, he was fat, so he was bigger than me, and he just shoved me to the ground with not bad force. And I scraped my elbows, my knees, my hands, my wrists. It's great from like the smooth high or that's inside schools. Maybe like a hospital. Yeah, kinda if that makes more sense if you know what I'm talking about. And I'm curious here. Anyways, and they walk away. They walk past me. I had this like perfect. They walk past me and they're laughing and I'm embarrassed. And what do I do? 
what do you think? Do you think I ran up and smacked in the back of the head? You think I ran and told a teacher? No, I just didn't do anything. And I just let that pain of literally doing the thing. I could have done anything. I could have said, hey, what the heck? I could have yelled. I could have screamed. I could have started crying right there. I could have gotten someone's attention. I could have done anything. But instead of that, I didn't know. I got up and then I walked to the bus stop. I'm feeling sorry for myself. I'm feeling embarrassed. I'm feeling weak. It's, I can't describe this feeling of weakness at the time. Weak. Just, I felt like the lowest person on earth. And I'm at the bus stop. And I have a bunch of friends up. And I don't tell any of them. I don't say anything. Maybe I wanted to. Maybe I said it with the way I was acting, but. I didn't tell anybody. I didn't say, hey, this kid just did this thing. Let's go beat it. Beat him up. My wrists are like, this is me. You see this pencil? That was me. Bigger now, but like, at the time, it just, I, you don't have to be big to defend yourself. Just do it. Just do anything. Next time. If, if, or if this ever happens to you. But I did nothing. Anyways, on the bus ride home, my friend, on the bus ride home, my friend, he noticed, I think I was probably just tearing up, feeling bad, feeling terrible. And then he saw my hands and was just like, yo, like, what happened? And then I told him what happened. And I don't know, I just felt so low and so small in every way, physically, mentally. And then, of course, emotionally, I just felt so small. And what do you think happened to this kid when I told my parents and my friend, shout out my friend, he knows who he is, I think, probably, if he watched. And what do you think happened? He got two, I think, a week, two days to a week in, it's called ISS. In school suspension, they basically just see you in a room with all the other bad kids and you basically just do your schoolwork and you stare at a wall. Great, great punishment. The school system, by the way, so effective because do you think he learned anything? No. And then two days to a week later, he's back in the classroom. And I felt unsafe. I didn't feel good about this result. And it's hard for me to put into words the situation of how things are today because today this thing, it would not slide. It wouldn't be okay. And as for me, as time went on and we got older, luck runs out pretty quick. Luck runs out. Whatever extra size he had on me, very shortly. This is, I'm not trying to sound like ego. Like, I hope you can understand what I'm saying and be like, oh, yeah, fair enough. The, it took me a while to realize. Once I started driving, I, I realized where this person lived. I understood. What, what and it's not just this one random time he did this like he was just all around just dropped out of school at some point probably like, it was either like freshman sophomore year he was not going to school he stopped and was he doing anything productive no. I don't know. but i had to realize maybe his parents do drugs Maybe the house that he lives in is abusive. Maybe nobody communicates at all. And of course, bigger, even way bigger problems than just, oh yeah, you never tell me how you feel. <laughs> These are like 
bad problems. You walk in the house and it reeks. Dishes are everywhere. There's clothes everywhere. It's just negative. Maybe you get punched as soon as you walk in the house because you didn't do something. Way bigger problems. But just the life of this person and this person is just the opposites. Complete, completely different. And I'll tell you another story about uh, me, getting, me getting a little twied by some random kid. So fast forward to sophomore year. So we're five years in the future. I'm on, I'm like a year in a self-improvement. I joined a martial arts class. Physi physically, things were very different. I wasn't big, but I wasn't big, but I had the, like the skinny, like aesthetic physique, barely any muscle though. So like, basically if you're like skinny fat and then you cut, basically where you're going to be after that, at that point. And I'm sitting in math class and next to these kids, these two kids, these kids. Don't like them. They're negative all the time. They just, I'm, I'm not going to, but I'm sitting there and it's so embarrassing to say this story, but I hope me telling it, getting it off my chest and you listening to this, I hope you get something from it of what not to do in this situation. This kid, who I really don't like, he stands up and he's, hey, ma'am, can I go, miss, can I go to the bathroom? And she's, sure, whatever. Like, they're in the middle of a lesson. And he walks behind me and just smacks the crap out of the back of my head. The entire club class is just silent. And I'm, like, about to get up. And then the teacher's, hey. She doesn't yell at the kid who just smacked me in the back of the head so clearly. She says, hey, she yells at me for about to like get up and like, do something and like just red. And instead of saying, hey, teacher, I don't really care what you have to say right now. There's more important things. Do something about this. I just sat back down and. I just hear kids laughing. Some kids are just silent. Some kids are like, what just happened? This is so crazy. The amount of respect I lost for myself in that moment when I didn't do anything was like, that just kills, kills you inside. And I hear laughter from behind the girl who I was, you know, dating, she's laughing too. Think about that. The girl I'm dating sees me get smacked in the back of the head and then starts laughing. Do I blame her? Not really. By not doing anything, by not making it more friction for this person to do something again, when you don't do that, what do you expect? Really, what do you expect? I've been doing martial arts for about a year at this point. I knew how to throw a, a jab and a cross. I knew how to kick, especially. But I didn't do anything. I just sat there. And then, like, when he got back, like, He sat down and was just like smirking, like, I don't know. And then he said something later, like in the class period, I didn't do anything when he got back either, which anyways, he, he said something else. And I just kind of like, I just like, just kicked him in the leg. Cause and it was just, bro, 
this kind of stuff, it just, your testosterone just goes down. It just goes down. It's not good. Anyways, the teacher didn't do anything. Is it her job? I think so. I'm pretty sure. I think if you're in charge of 30 children who you're not supposed to leave out of your view, you're in charge of them. You are supervising. You, they are under your whatever. You're supervising them. And you let that kind of thing happen. I just think that's crazy. Anyways, I like kicked him and like his chair, like desk kind of fell over. Not really. I, what I really wanted to do was get into a fight. I didn't care. But that's another thing that happened. So don't do that. Do anything. Yell. Scream. Just don't do anything. The whole idea of, hey, be the bigger person. Some people might hear what I just told, what I just said to you. And they would say, oh, that's so much sure of you. That's so emotionally intelligent. One in two children experience bullying going through school. One in two, 50% have kids. So it's me or you kind of thing. And when that does happen, your risk of basically everything bad that can happen, like delinquency, suicide, I got to be careful talking about this. It goes up and that's not okay. That's not a good thing. But when you sit there, you don't do anything about it. You let that just hate build. And you let the respect for yourself go down. Your self-esteem is terrible. You basically feel like you have no self-esteem. You don't care. That, it just, it's terrible. So don't do nothing. Do something. Hit them. Get loud. Yell. Scream. Do something. When I was in elementary school, I was sitting at the lunch table, and th that kid didn't even apologize. Like, much later, he didn't. He like he just. And it's, is it is it past? Should I still should I go do something now? I don't think so. I don't think I think it's too late for that. Just living in anxiety. When's he going to do something again? When's he going to do this? When's he going to do this? I hated school. I hated school. Anyways, rewind to like elementary school. I'm sitting at the table and my friends, maybe I just, I don't know. I'm sitting at a table surrounded by people who are my friends. I was probably on the edge of the table. I heard, no, no, I was surrounded by them. I'm sitting at a table surrounded by the people who I call my friends. And it feels like they're just ganging up on me and just saying insults. But it, it's a joke, bro, because like we're all laughing. Like, it's not that deep, bro. Like, it's just, it's chill. It's just, it's just banter. It's hard to talk about, but I basically kind of just sat there and took it. And I was like making jokes back to myself, like self-deprecation. And I I got up eventually because my eyes started like ball up with tears because I was like, I didn't know I, my trash talk had no trash talk. These kids were way better trash talk. Was, at least this one kid sitting right across from me. And like I said something and everyone was like, what? Like they thought like it was just the weirdest thing you could have said. And that just like, 
everything I felt like I was doing was just wrong. Nothing was right. Anyways, I went to the teachers and I kind of told them what happened. I didn't tell them what happened. I said I wanted to leave. I wanted to go. I wanted to go to the bathroom or something. They could tell like something was like wrong. And I kept looking like at the, at the, at those kids, my friends who were just messing with me the whole time. And probably a bit before this, I was just asking, like, Hey, could I leave? And I kept looking at them because I didn't want to tell, I didn't want to tell the teachers. Cause like low key, these two, I didn't like miss Mr. G and Miss Williams. So, like they were bullies as well. They, yeah. When the teacher just like yells at you, like right next to your face, like about something you did and it wasn't even like bad. If someone did something worse and you feel like there's just like a weird power dynamic, that, that also hurts a lot. But I'm asking, hey, can I go? Tears all up, all in my eyes. I'm like, hey, can I go? And they're like, no, what is it? What's going on? I don't know really what happened. But I guess I told them or something. I told my parents and then they told the teachers. And then the next day or like a few days later, they had some BS assembly about bullying just because of, because of me. But it's just, it doesn't really help when it has to get to the point where there is a problem before people actually start doing things, before people actually start to educate, before something is done, before some kid in your classroom who has been getting bullied since he was five years old and has never had the response of getting stronger, getting bigger, becoming more resilient because of it. I, that wasn't me. I got weaker because of it. It made me worse over time. I can look back now and say, hey, I'm grateful for everything. Write it down. Hey, this is sick. Because I can tell the people, hey, if you're going through this, you can come out the other side just fine. And better than the, the bully. As we saw with the first story, I, I don't want to talk about it too much just because it's not my mission. But it, it just makes me sad. Where there's a little kid, little me, t small human. I was creative. I was smart. I was funny. And I started being less of that, less of those things, less of the things that I, less of the things that would actually help. I started dumbing myself down because I didn't want people to see who I was and then t have a problem with. It. Obviously, not care. It doesn't affect me. unless it's like coming from a friend who's like constructive and he wants to help. But you get what I mean. And this is kind of where coping mechanisms come in into your life. When you discover video games, TikTok ones, when you have, when you, when vices become available to you eventually and you've had, and you've had these problems for your whole life, it gives you a comfort. It gives you this little pat on the head of, hey, you're a good one. You're okay. You're all right. And I feel like this is where addiction comes in to, for a lot of people, especially young men, people I know, people like myself. So, Just getting past that part, very difficult. When you had this experience of feeling worse than everybody else on planet Earth, feeling like you're like below, below like the bottom. And the stories I told you are like just the most memorable ones, but it led up to those. I tried to be pretty unfiltered on this. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you did. If you watched till this point, 
Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> That's insane. I really appreciate it. But please take care of yourself. If you do know someone who is getting bullied or you are someone who's getting bullied, please listen to what I said. Don't ever be the bigger person because you're not. You'll lose self-confidence. You'll be less sur sure of yourself. You'll be less assertive. You'll be more agreeable. What are these traits kind of like? The more feminine, more like beta. I don't like using those terms, beta and alpha. I think they're kind of ridiculous, but I hope that kind of, I hope you can understand. You can take it with a grain of salt. I feel like this is so, this is so whatever. Thank you for watching. Please check out my other video. I think it should be right here. Watch this. If you think you're boring, I put a few hours into it. And then this video is just kind of off the cuff, unfiltered, a little bit of editing here and there um, to make it slow. But have a good day, bro. Take care of yourself.